the relatively few ayah is contained a rather comprehensive description of human development from the time of commingling of the gametes through organogenesis. No such distinct and complete record of human development, such as classification, terminology, and description existed previously. In most, if not all, instances, this description antedates by many centuries the recording of the various stages of human embryonic and fetal development recorded in the traditional scientific literature. I find it very interesting that this sort of information is, is in the uh, ancient scriptures of the Holy Quran, and uh, I have no way of, of knowing where they would come from, but uh, I think it is extremely interesting that they are there and that this work is going on to discover uh, the meaning of some of the passages. And then you have flatly denied to be just, you know, from a man or a human uh, source. From who then do you think the original or the source of such info, information? Well, I would think it must be the divine being. In substance, the Quran describes not only the development of external form, but emphasizes also the internal stages, the stages inside the embryo of its creation and development, emphasizing major events recognized by contemporary science. Thank you for your attention. As a scientist, I can only deal with things which I can specifically see. Uh, I can understand embryology and developmental biology. Uh, I can understand the words that are translated to me from the Koran. Uh, as I gave the example before, uh, if I were to transpose myself into that era, knowing what I do today and describing things, I could not describe the things which uh, were described. Uh, I see no reason, uh, I see no evidence for the fact uh, to refute the concept uh, that uh, this individual, Muhammad, had to be developing this information from someplace. Uh, so I see nothing here in conflict with the concept that uh, divine intervention was involved in, in what he was able to write. I say I'm very much impressed by finding true astronomical facts in Quran. And for us, we modern astronomers have been studying very small fields of the universe. We concentrated our efforts to for understanding of very small part because by using telescope we can see only a very few part the sky without thinking all the universe so uh, by reading Quran and by answering to your questions I think I can find my future way for investigation of the universe. Well, thinking of many of these questions and thinking uh, where Muhammad came from, he was after all a Bedouin. I think it is almost impossible that he could have known about things like the common uni uh, origin of the universe because scientists have only found out within the last few years is very complicated and advanced technological methods. I think if you combine all these and you combine all these um, statements are, that are being made in the Quran in term, that relate to the earth and the formation of the earth and science in general, you can basically say that the statements made there in many ways are true. They can now be confirmed by scientific methods. And uh, in a way you can say that the Quran is a simple science textbook for the simple man. And that many of the statements made in there at that time 
could not be proven, but that modern scientific methods are now in a position to prove what Mohammed said 1,400 years ago. It has been a great pleasure for me to help clarify statements in the Quran about human development. It is clear to me that these statements must have come to Muhammad from God or Allah because almost all of this knowledge was not discovered, uh, discovered until many centuries later. This proves to me that Muhammad must have been a messenger of God or Allah. Because the, state, because the staging of human embryos is complex, owing to the continuous process of change during development, it is proposed that a new system of classification could be developed using the terms mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. The proposed system is simple, comprehensive, and conforms with present embryological knowledge. Intensive studies of the Quran and Hadith in the last four years have revealed a system for classifying human embryos that is amazing since it was recorded in the 7th century AD. As far as it is known from the history of embryology, little was known about the staging and classification of human embryos until the 20th century. For this reason, the descriptions of the human embryo in the Quran cannot be based on scientific knowledge in the 7th, 7th century. The only reasonable conclusion is that these descriptions were revealed to Muhammad from God. He could not have known such details because he was an illiterate man with absolutely, absolutely no scientific... The way it was explained to me is that Muhammad was a very ordinary man. He couldn't have read, didn't know to write. In fact, he was an illiterate. And we're talking about 1,200 years ago, you have someone, a measured person, making profound pronouncements and statements that um, are amazingly accurate of a scientific nature. And I, don't, I personally can't see how this could be a mere chance. There are too many accuracies. And like Dr. Moore, I have no difficulty in my mind reconciling that this is a divine inspiration or revelation um, which led him to these statements. So the, the two Hadiths denoted uh, furnish us with a specific timetable for the main embryological development before 40 days. Again, the point has been made, I think, repeatedly by the speakers this morning. These Hadiths could not have been obtained on the basis of the scientific knowledge that was available at the time of their writing, and hence could support uh, the Hadiths reflecting the knowledge of God. Thank you very much. It follows, I think, that not only is there no conflict between genetics and religion, but in fact, religion that guides science by adding revelation to some of the traditional scientific approaches. That there exist statements in the Quran centuries later to be valid with support knowledge in the Quran having been derived from God. Thank you very much.